Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael. Welcome back to IDB. In this video, I'm showing you some lesser known kind of hidden features inside of iOS 16. So I have iOS 16 beta one installed here on my main iPhone, my iPhone 13 pro. And because I've been using it as my daily phone, I have the benefit of seeing every small little tweak and change in the operating system. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So I have a list of 10 lesser known features in iOS 16. So first up is inside of Wi-Fi settings. So click on Wi-Fi and then choose the network that you're connected to. So you can actually see your Wi-Fi password. So in previous versions of iOS, it would only let you copy your password, but now you can actually view the Wi-Fi password. So if you click on it, it'll ask for authentication with Face ID, and then you can see your Wi-Fi password. So why is this useful? Well, if you're setting up a new device like an iPad, for example, and you don't remember your Wi-Fi password, all you have to do is jump into settings and then you can view your Wi-Fi password. Next up is on the home screen for Spotlight Search. So Spotlight Search is a lot easier to get to now, and in my opinion, it's a lot less confusing. So before, in previous versions of iOS, the only way to access it was to pull down like this. But this can be kind of confusing because you have three gestures that involve pulling down. So you have your notifications, you have your control center, and then you have your spotlight. But now spotlight makes a lot more sense and it lives in this little pill shape at the bottom of your home screen. And all you have to do is click it right here to access spotlight search. When you are swiping between your pages, you can see you still get that little indicator telling you which page you are on. But when you're not swiping, you can see it says search right here. So all you have to do is tap it to access spotlight search. This makes makes a lot more sense in my opinion. Next up is inside the weather application. So the weather app got a redesign recently, but now in iOS 16, you can view expanded functionality for pretty much every aspect of weather. So if I click on a specific day, you can see we get a bunch of info right here. If we scroll down, we can click on, for example, air quality and get more info about this. And then we can also see details about sunset, for example. So this is kind of cool. If you want to see the average sun length for each month, you can actually see what sunrise and sunset averages are uh, for each month of the year. So if you open the weather app, you can click on each page in here and view a lot more information. So overall, the weather app is just a lot better in iOS 16. So next up has to do with privacy. So you may know whenever your iPhone is using the camera or the microphone, you get that little indicator on the top right of your screen. So if I open the camera, you can see there is a green dot now at the top. So this actually has more functionality in iOS 16. So you see that green dot, whenever you see the green dot or the orange dot, and then you go into control center, you're actually able to click this at the top and then see which applications were accessing certain parts of your device. So you can see here, it says privacy and it says camera was accessing our camera, microphone and location. And if you had multiple applications accessing this, you'll see this entire list live right here. So next up is inside of Apple Music and Apple Music now lets you set favorite artists. So inside of Apple Music, you can see I'm here on my favorite band and there is now a new icon at the top right. It's this little star. So if you click this star on one of your artists, uh, the idea is uh, once they release new music or a new single, uh, you'll see that music recommended more inside of your browse page in Apple Music. So the option to uh, tell Apple Music what your favorite artists are uh, just makes it a lot more personalized. So next up is with the keyboard. So finally in iOS 16, we have the option for haptic feedback on the keyboard. And Apple's implementation of this is really good in my opinion. So inside settings, you wanna click on sounds and haptics and then choose keyboard feedback. And then as you can see here, we have the option to turn on sounds as we did before, but now we can turn on haptic feedback for the keyboard. And the haptic feedback is really subtle. It's not that awful annoying buzz like other third-party keyboards you can get on the App Store. So the way Apple has implemented this on their stock keyboard is really nice and it just improves your typing experience a lot more. So the next hidden feature is for anybody that has an iPhone 13 or 13 Pro, and that is Face ID is now supported in landscape mode. So you can see I'm going to lock my phone here, and then I'm able to authenticate with Face ID in landscape mode. So I have no idea why this is only limited to the iPhone 13, and I assume this is also going to be supported on the next iPhone 14. Uh, Apple did redesign the Face ID module at the top of the iPhone with the iPhone 13, so that may be why it's limited to just these devices. It's really convenient for me if I'm ever watching uh, a video in bed and I accidentally lock my phone, I don't have to rotate it back into portrait mode just to unlock it. So just having the option to authenticate my phone with Face ID in landscape mode is definitely a nice feature to have. I just wish it was available on all Face ID phones.
The next hidden feature is inside of photos and this one is really cool. So you have the option to copy edits for your photos. So I'll show you what this means. So if I click on a certain photo here and then click on edit, so we'll click on auto and then maybe do a few more adjustments like this exposure and then maybe bring the brilliance up a bit. So if I want to have these edits apply to different photos, I can do this instead of doing each photo individually. So you click here on this ellipsis icon at the top right and you can click on copy edits just like this and then go to your next photo. Let's say this one right here and then click the same icon and then you have the option to paste edits. So as you can see, the image just got edited like that. So you can do this to as many photos as you want. So if you're out doing a photo shoot and you want all your photos to have the same style, the option to copy and paste all of your edits is a huge time saver. So the next change is inside of wallet right here. It's a pretty small change, but it definitely is convenient. So if you ever purchase something online using Apple Pay, you're able to see all of your orders in a list here in wallet. So there's a new icon at the top, right? If you click on this, you can see it says orders and all of your orders that you have placed with Apple Pay on the web are going to live here. And then you'll have the option to click on each one and you can track the progress of each parcel. And then finally, our last hidden change is inside of contacts. So I don't know why it took Apple this long to implement this change, but you can now delete a contact a lot easier. So in all previous versions of iOS, the only way to delete a contact, believe it or not, was to click on it and then click on edit and then scroll all the way down and then click on delete. But now in iOS 16, it's a lot faster to delete a contact. So all you have to do is haptic touch on the contact you want to delete. And then there is a delete button right there at the bottom. So if you guys found this video interesting or helpful, make sure to drop a like on it and also comment down below and tell me your favorite hidden feature I covered in this video. I have been running iOS 16 beta on my phone since release, like I said. So if you guys want to see a follow up video on the beta and my suggestion on whether or not you should install the beta, tell me in the comments as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you in the next video.